right to the rocks. Then I make that shit back. Run up on me, get shot in the back. It's just been a beauty field. Yeah, scratch that man. Back another dab. Yes, today we have Ooh, having a lot of fun. Pops, we're back out west. And we have another hood war story. Shout out to you. The story of Timothy McGee. Oh, Monster of At Atwater Village. I feel like we did this, but we didn't. I, I feel like we covered him. <laughs> but we was, he, was he a güero that grew up in a Mexican neighborhood? We never I did think, this, I right? I think we did this, but then we got deleted because like, we were like caught. We got in trouble with the channel, with this network that, yeah. we, that we, well, we upload. We got in trouble with them and shit. Um, nah, we never did this, though. Never did it. I think we did. But if it's the first time for them, <laughs> subscribe to the channel, request the content, and we... Yeah. It's Jerry TV. I feel like we did this, but we didn't. Should I just check Shut real quick? Should I check our recent vids? Nah, we didn't do this. <laughs> we just did the pace of run reaction. And that go check that out. That's why he's acting like this right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But let's have a right to it. No more talking. Welcome to Hood War Stories. In this episode, I'll be discussing the life of Timothy McGee. Timothy Joseph McGee, also known as Wedo, was born on April 27, 1973, in Los Angeles, Ooh. California. Timothy was primarily raised in the Atwater Village neighborhood, Atwater. located north of downtown LA. His father abandoned him as a young boy, leaving the family and moving to Alaska for work. Oh shit, man. Locals recalled Timothy as a typical kid who liked to skateboard in the community. No, but I heard if you go to Alaska, there's a lot of money out there. A lot of people go there and they make like $100 an hour, oh, right? Yeah. To Alaska. Alaska? <laughs> yeah, Alaska is the only state that you can carry straight kakank. Oh, kank, like any gun. Kind of anywhere. Because yeah. of wildlife, but only thing is when the cops pull you over, you have to tell them that you have a gun on you. I mean, that's everywhere, right? Shut up, man, man, ha, man, he. Locals recalled Timothy as a typical kid who liked to skateboard in the community. His ethnic background is of Scottish and Mexican descent. Oh, wow. He was given the street name Wedo, which is Spanish for light skinned person. He attended John Marshall High School, which is located in the Los Feliz district. Timothy quickly hey. became involved in Tunerville 13 Ooh, during his time. Tunerville Reefer 13 is a primarily Mexican-American gang that is located in the Atwater Village neighborhood. At the time, Northeast Los Angeles was very territorial with gangs like Frogtown, Westside Locos, and the Rascals. In 1989, Timothy fired a shotgun into a crowd of people, severely wounded one man. He was sent to a juvenile facility because he was only 16 at the time. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a madman. I say madman. I know a dude that did that. We was at a house party, chilling. He just going there with the shotgun, start arguing with somebody, come back, go get the shotgun and shoot the party up, like glass. Wow. He went to jail juvenile too, like as a kid. Some people are just madmen. But they know, do you think people are aware that if I go to jail as a juvie, I might get out earlier? Think that you nah, I just think that you're a complete idiot. When you're <laughs> Because your mind sounds not right in your head, bro. Yeah. Real talk. He was sent to a juvenile facility because he was only 16 at the time. He was released four years later. In 1993, he assaulted a police officer in San oh. Bernardino County and had to serve another four oh. years. He was released again in 1997. He assaulted, so assault that could be with a bat, with a, well, with a deadly weapon, right? Assault with a deadly weapon. You're going to assault with your hands. Oh, so you're assaulting someone with your hands and you got four Plus, years. Because they give you more time when you touch the... Yeah. I was going to say, call him an animal, but I'm trying to keep it PG. <laughs> in 1997, Juan and Pedro, who were from the Rascals, were chased through the streets of Atwater by Timothy. Oh, wow. Timothy opened fire on the two, striking Juan in the back. He was paralyzed from the waist oh, down. Wow. Pedro took cover at a gas what, station, standing behind a glass that he... paralyzed from the waist down? I'm not sure. I think it's one of his mans. We'll look back a little bit. Yeah. My bad, because I, I lost track of time. Me too. <laughs> Juan and Pedro, who were from the Rascals, were chased through the streets oh. of Atwater by Timothy. Timothy opened fire on the two, striking Juan in the back. He was paralyzed from the waist oh down. Pedro took cover at a gas station, standing behind a glass that he thought was bulletproof. Timothy repeatedly fired through the glass door, hitting Pedro in the back. Pedro would later recover from his injuries. On October 14th, 1997, Timothy drove through Frogtown territory, oh, looking for enemies. As he was driving, Bang. he spotted Ronnie, who was a member of the Frogtown Reefer. Timothy then got out the car and approached Ronnie, who claimed that he had no gang affiliation. After being forced to remove his shirt and showing multiple Frogtown tattoos, <sighs> Timothy unleashed a hell of bullets on Ronnie. Ronnie suffered a total of 28 gunshot wounds, 
He died at the oh scene. Timothy began to quickly climb the ranks of Tudorville 13. He was said to have killed for sport, even pretending to be homeless so he can catch his victim oh, slipping. Wow. After violating parole in 1997, Timothy was in prison for about a year and a half. In oh, March so he never got arrested for those for the two attempted murder? Nah, yeah, maybe later on, but this dude's straight scary, bro. Oh my god, and the, and the body he caught. Woo! He's a slow person. He was again released and lived with his grandmother in San Gabriel Valley. On October 17th, 1999, rapper Corrupt and a few other death row artists were concluding a recording session at the Echo Sounds Music Studio. You heard what he said, the rapper Corrupt? And a couple West Coast artists are now you involved in Death Row and all that. Word. And all that. So this is gonna get interesting. Like oh, rap. Interesting, right? Rapper Corrupt and a few other Death Row artists were concluding a recording session at the Echo Sounds Music Studio. The crew had gathered on the studio patio at around 11.40 p.m. when Timothy and another gunman ambushed them and began shooting without warning. Corrupt's bodyguard, Dwayne Draws Dupree, was hit multiple oh, times shit. and pronounced dead at the scene. Death Row artist Javon Norellis Jones was wounded in the foot, and Willard Actor Fool Givens was wounded in the calf. Daz, who was Snoop Dogg's cousin, was also at the studio that night, but he wasn't injured. Oh, wow. On June 3rd, 2000, Ryan, who was from the Rascals, was walking home from a party. He was on the 3300 block of Silver Lake Boulevard, which is located in Tunerville Gang territory. Timothy then spotted him and began to open fire. Wow. Ryan was hit and died at the oh scene. Timothy reportedly had told others that he had killed Ryan because the area wasn't big enough for two people with the same nickname. He didn't just limit his murders to gang members. On September 14, 2000, Timothy allegedly shot- That's what happens when you don't get arrested for your crimes. If he would've got arrested early, he wouldn't have this- He killed somebody because they had the same nickname. nickname. Insane in the membrane. You gotta be like cuckoo. Insane man. in the brain. And you just said it early in the reaction, like, yeah, like, People do crimes, they just like something's wrong with them, man. Yeah, like some people have, they lean towards violence. I would say certain crimes. Like if you sell some work, I, I believe that like you want to get to the bed. Like I don't think it's a yeah, Like I, I, growing up in the hood, I was fortunate. Like the crazy, to the two craziest dudes in the hood, like me. Like, <laughs> like, hey, what's good? What's good? What's up, pops? What's up? And you know what I'm saying? I kept them close. Like, yo, what up? They have, they have cocaine on their nose. <laughs> but, yo, you got a little white. Oh, word, my bad, my bad. That's crazy. Robot Jr. Marty was a 17-year-old high school student who was drawing a picture at the LA River that day. He then turned his gun on 33-year-old David Lamont Martin, Just who was a homeless man Timothy believed had witnessed the shooting. Allegedly, while standing over David's body, Timothy turned to his fellow gang member and commented without emotion that he was hungry and wanted to go get something to eat. During his reign over the Atwater Village, Timothy ran his gang like a military organization, making members take part in group exercises and target practices. He also introduced Tunerville to tactical training and insisted that armed sentries be posted at every main thoroughfare oh, into his territory with cell phones and radios. That was that was the white IQ. <laughs> yeah, the soldiers on every corner. Yeah, and he had walkie talkies. That's yeah, yeah. that's the Scottish in him. That yeah, higher IQ shit. That that, mark, that uh, program shit. Put him of any suspicious activity. Over time, his killings became more frequent and less selective. In the pre-dawn hours of July 4th, 2000, Timothy used a police radio scanner to track the progress of two LAPD officers as they chased three Tunaville members into wow. the heart of the gang's turf in Atwater Village. Gang members threw a washing machine and a bicycle in the road, causing a police car to swerve toward two gunmen that were waiting in the dark. How do you just throw a washing machine though? Like and you push that shit? Road. To set up the cops to drive towards the guns. That's OD. This guy was on a mission, bro. Bullets struck the car. One tore a hole in the officer's pants, but neither were injured. Uh -oh. Timothy had been incarcerated again for another parole violation, but this time at the California Institution for Men. He was released again in May 2001. Starting in June, he was suspected of shooting nine individuals in the span of five months, leaving six people dead and three wounded. The shooting spree began on June 11, 2001. Yo, Timothy this is after he caught five bodies. I don't know. How did he get away with five bodies, though? I mean, three bodies, how my fault. Do, how does he do this and, like... And there's shootings that we don't even know about. Oh, imagine all the shit we don't know about. That's shit he got convicted for. You know that, right? Unless someone ratted on him. Well, we'll know at the end. Let's see. Something happened. Allegedly driving through the Los Feliz area when he spotted Manuel, who was just passing through with his pregnant girlfriend. 
Timothy allegedly opened fire on their vehicle on Los Feliz Boulevard near the Interstate 5. Manuel was pronounced dead and his girlfriend suffered severe brain damage, but their unborn baby was successfully delivered. Oh, wow. In July 2001, Carlos was working at a furniture warehouse on North San Fernando Road in Atwater Village. Authorities say that Timothy had driven by and seen Carlos and ordered gang affiliates to kill him because he did not recognize him. The homicidal order was carried out successfully. Sometime in early August of that same year, Atwater Village resident Sherry Wasowski had reported to police that Timothy was dealing drugs out of his sister's house that was nearby. On August 8, 2001, Timothy and another gunman allegedly walked up and opened fire on Sherry's vehicle. Fatally wounded Sherry, her mother Marianne, and their neighbor Brim. On November, Killing Sims is crazy. Yo, like this shit. Like if they made a movie, like if they were to make a movie about this guy, you'd be like, this shit fake. Yeah. Man. How you, he been banging since like 97, just killing people. And getting away with it. And getting away with it. How did they even let that happen? Like, and he was on parole doing all this. I just think that sometimes people become larger than light. Like, he's like the real boogeyman. Like, the real... Word. The real Debo. Like, when this guy pulled up... Everybody was quiet. Everybody was quiet, man. 2001, Timothy was allegedly roaming the streets with a fellow gang member, seeking revenge over the death of a comrade that happened hours earlier. Armed with handguns and rifles, they came upon a rival gang member, Dwayne. Dwayne was driving his Mitsubishi with his girlfriend Marjorie and a friend Marjorie. Erica on the 3100 block of Hollydale Drive. At around 12 midnight, Dwayne pulled up to a residence. Timothy and Eduardo allegedly pulled up in front of them. They proceeded to exit their vehicle and open fire on the Mitsubishi without warning or without any verbal altercation. Dwayne ducked and was struck in the right hand while Erica ducked in the back seat to avoid injury. As Dwayne threw the car in reverse and accelerated away, Marjorie was hit multiple times. She was driven to the Glendale Memorial Hospital, where she later died. Tunerville gang member Eduardo was arrested the following day. He righted. Homicide detectives announced on November 27, 2001, that another suspect, Timothy, was still at large and a warrant had been issued for his arrest. Bro only got conv bro only got found while well, he was only they were only looking for him for only one murder, right? At that point, but then everything came out because you know the dude with the blonde hair. They probably he probably stuck out because he got the rooster look and <sighs> red up here. They like they he had two tone and he probably got locked up before somebody know. And so that was a serial yeah, killer. It's always a snitch, man. But he was doing this like in the early two thousands. Dude, he was going since the nineties. Yeah, yeah, this dude was a straight villain. He thought, yo, you gotta be thinking, you gotta like think that you're invisible at one point, right? Like, you get away with all these crimes, guys? Like, what do you think about that? I'm invincible today. Let us know in the comments. I'm invincible. Which is why. I'm invincible today. today. I'm invincible. Chill, chill. Let me do this thing and chill. Sorry. Don't do that. A detective noted that ever since Timothy got released from prison, crimes in the Atwater area have skyrocketed. Christina Duran, who was a friend of Timothy's, had learned of Marjorie's murder after Timothy had asked her for help that same day. He needed to retrieve his girlfriend's cell phone that he had dropped at the scene of the Marjorie murder. Christina was unsuccessful in finding the cell phone, but police managed to locate it and use it later as evidence. Shortly after the murder, Christina admitted to police during a videotape interview that Timothy was involved. During the interview, Christina was shivering and shaking and kept expressing her fear of retaliation. Two days later, after speaking with police, Christina was murdered execution oh style God. on the 13200 block of Fairgrove Street in Baldwin Park. Bro, I don't she care if she's a snitch or not. Stop killing civilians, bro. She's a freaking civilian. If she want to tell y'all, let her tell y'all. No, no, no. She wasn't a civilian. That's when you got to twist it. She oh. got involved. But going to look for cell phones for him. and I he, get he, it. Dude's bro. dangerous, man. Like Maybe she was forced to do so. She got I, threatened. I'll be honest with you. Like I grew up in a real tough, wild neighborhood in the South Bronx. And I stayed in my lane, bro. Mm -hmm. You got to know who to stay away from. Like, this dude is not playing. And not only him, but it's just in society. Like, there's people who live a certain way. And if you involve yourself trying to be cool, uh -huh, I'll go look for the cell phone for you. We like, well, he was like, yo, I need you to go get the cell phone. Oh, no, I can't go. Yeah, and he's locked up. So, like, you could just tell him, like. Even if he wasn't locked up, be like, no. No, but people are scared of him, bro. She was probably forced to do that. Bro, that's possible, so I didn't think of that. In her 29th birthday that night, she was allegedly shot by Timothy five times in the right side oh of the head. God. 
Timothy wrote rap lyrics as a hobby, but never seriously pursued music. Most of his lyrics referred to his love of killing and his hatred of the police. One line that was eventually used against him in court read, when his protection won't work, realize your rat ain't gonna make the stand, which referred to his goal to eliminate anyone who might testify against him. He took the time to write, everything in this book is a work of fiction, inside a spiral notebook, in case it was ever seized by the police. This did not deter the prosecution in his eventual trial. A task force was initiated in 2002 after linking Timothy to numerous homicides. When it became clear that Timothy was running the Tunerville gang from out of state, the U.S. Marshal stepped in. They aided the LAPD in forming a task force with more investigators, vehicles, oh and even aircraft. Timothy was placed on the America's most wanted list. He spent months shifting between Atwater Village, Las Vegas, and Arizona never staying in one place for more than a week at a time. He would even throw off police by staying in rival gangs' neighborhoods. A break in the case came when a reader of a newspaper recognized Timothy as a man who was living in Bullhead City, Arizona. Timothy's father happened to own a business there. You the witness led authorities to like New Hampshire. He stayed out on this West Coast. Yeah, he should have left the West. I yeah, know he regrets cool. that. I know he'll probably see this video. I would have moved like to Maine. Literally, you could have Mexican like I would have bounced to South America, so you gotta get the fuck out. <laughs> the country. Yo, this dude was like in pain. <laughs> Apartment on Raymar Street on February 11, 2003, where Timothy had lived on and off for the past year. He was arrested the next day after being seen leaving the apartment with a female friend. Timothy was held without bail at the LA County Men's Central Jail. He took control of his cell block while awaiting trial, oh. getting inmates to violently riot when angry. He commanded inmates to assault the deputies with apples, oranges, urine, and bleach. Oh, wow. One riot reportedly took two hours to stop the chaos. In 2007, Timothy was sentenced to death on three murder charges and four attempted murders. But lack of sufficient evidence and witness testimony got him acquitted of several other charges. Oh, wow. He grinned as prosecutors described the gruesome details of his crimes. Timothy is currently on death row in San Quentin. I'd like to thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. But what happened to the other six murders? Oh, they said that it was sufficient evidence, but he most likely did it, they're saying, basically? The, the reporter yeah, guy? Yeah, 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 yeah. Essentially, he, he got acquitted of some shit, but three, three, three murders, he's in jail. Thanks for tuning in, y'all. We out of here. And I know how I get, so I got to stay low and I move my knot. I don't trust no nigga, I don't trust no man. Ain't no friends, everybody get shot. You never know how nigga ain't gonna throw. I'm hitting the floor with a couple of shots. You better move, you better duck either way to go. You'll get got.